Irox is a global fitness race for everybody. Participants from all around the world compete in the exact same format. The race starts with a one kilometre run, followed by one functional movement, which repeats eight times. It takes place in large indoor venues, creating a unique stadium-like atmosphere for all participants. That's the marketing blurb. This video will show you what it's like to take part having done no training and having only ever done one of those exercises before. Spoiler alert, a week since I did the event and it's only today that my muscles have stopped being sore. Who signed up for the baby division? Well, we thought, we thought we should do it just as well as the people having a pint first. I decided not to have a pint first, although that may have settled my pre-event nerves. There are eight functional movements to high rocks. Ski erg, sled push, sled pull, burpee broad jump, rowing, farmer's carry, sandbag lunges and wall balls. I have used a rowing machine before, but I'd never done any of the other ones. I was confident about the running, but my male ego made me think, I'll be fine with the rest, despite my lack of knowledge or ability. Registration was straightforward, although I did forget my timing chip. Thankfully the volunteer noticed and ran after me. I convinced my brother to enter the race, he was as unprepared as I was. The men's race was well underway, so we took time to check out the venue. There was a shop selling expensive clothes, finally no changing facilities. There's a lot of fit looking men with their tops off. I don't think the world needs to see my belly, so I looked for somewhere to change into a t-shirt. At this point I gave my camera to my wife. She had never used it before, but did a great job filming the rest of this. We started in a group of about 30 people. At this point, a video in the tent was saying, think of all the training you've done to get here. Yeah, I think maybe we should have done some. It's very easy for spectators to get close to each event. My wife had no trouble getting around. The race starts with two laps of the course. At the end of each lap, there was a big screen that said whether I had to do one more lap or go into the rock zone. The rock zone is what they call the area of all the equipment. In Glasgow, seven of the events were in one part of the course and the last was on a different bit. I completed lap one in four minutes, 43 seconds. The ski erg was easier than I thought it was going to be. The resistance felt quite light, but maybe setting it higher would have made me quicker. It took me 5 minutes 45 seconds, which was 991st slowest in the day. Considering only 971 people completed the course, I was worse than people who didn't even finish. I was happy to have the first event over and done with and set out on lap 2 still feeling fresh. <laughs> Supposedly Outlander star Sam Huggan was taking part in the race. I'm guessing he was one of the 900 folk better than me. The second event is the sled push. My guess was that I'd be okay at it. I based this on nothing else other than being 6 foot 1 and 13 stone. Some of that is hopefully muscle and not donut fat. You must cover 50 meters in total with the sled push. This is split up as four lengths of 12 and a half meters. My tactic was to keep as low as possible and not stop pushing until I completed a length. It did feel like hard work. The carpeted floor has a lot of resistance. I enjoyed the challenge of it and it was actually my best event in terms of time and position. I completed it in 3 minutes, 11 seconds and in 563rd place. Lap 3 the run and I was still feeling good. The next event is sled pull. This is also 4 lengths of 25 metres. The night before the race I watched a video entitled How to do a sled pull. Andrew didn't watch it. He didn't realise you could walk backwards whilst pulling. He found it a lot easier once I told him he could do that. The weight felt okay but due to the lack of training I had no arm strength. I had to use my legs and body to do the pull. It felt fine but it was slow took 6 minutes 28 seconds for 845th place. I did trip over the rope and fall on my ass, but thankfully my wife didn't get that on film. The run felt good, we were consistently lapping at 4 minutes 40ish per kilometre, but the next event was the one I was dreading, 80 metres of burpee broad jumps. My burpees are like the sinking of the Titanic, slow to go down and once at the bottom I'm not getting back up. I thought this would be hell, and I was wrong. It was much, much worse than that. Look at Andrew's technique here. His hands go forward. 
He says he beat me fair and square, but if Hydrox had VAR, he'd get a red card. This was the first point in the race where I thought I could quite happily go home now. The second point I thought that was after the next jump, and the third point was after the third jump. I cannot stress how hard this was for me. I think this is where training really helped. Up to this point, my natural fitness and size got me through, but this actually required technique and practice. I think one of the good things about the race is having your supporters so close. I felt an obligation to keep going, because otherwise my wife would never let me live it down. The volunteers all do a great job offering encouragement, and it does feel a very inclusive, welcoming event. If you're thinking of doing it, then definitely sign up to the next one. I completed it in 11 minutes 11 seconds. This was 950th on the day. It was a relief to see the finish line and if I never do a burpee ever again, that'll be too soon. I've just noticed we both land at the same time. Thanks to my wife for the kind words about my jumping. The run had not gone well, I had to walk some of it as my stomach was feeling a bit poorly. I think what I had for lunch didn't agree with the burpees. The next event is rowing, that's the one bit supporters couldn't get to. I took it easy and used it as recovery so that my stomach could settle. My wife had to go to the loo so there's no footage of me doing the farmer's carry. I struggled with it due to a sweaty left hand. The weight was fine but it kept slipping out of my fingers. I'd put chalk on but I must have needed more. Next time I'd use a glove to help me. The second last event is sandbag lunges. At this point I was tired but my stomach was feeling okay. My big issue here was that I couldn't for the life of me remember which leg to lunge on. You would think it would be easy to go right, left, right, left and just repeat until you get to the end. But every time I stood up straight, my mind drew a blank. You can see my expression is me thinking really hard for what leg to do next. You got this. Next it took me nearly eight minutes yeah. to get to the end. Even though I thought I was slow, it was actually one of my better performances. I was 888th. The last event is wall balls. You throw a ball in the air a hundred times and in between each throw, you squat down. To make things easier, you can request a box to sit on. This is how it should be done. Now check out how I did it. It's not as impressive. The guy walking towards me is the umpire. He came over to say if I didn't sit up, he'd disqualify me. But I was so tired, I think I would have been quite happy to have been disqualified. The good thing about this part is that you have someone with you to count how many times you throw the ball in the air. He was really encouraging and he told me that he hadn't did anyone fail yet today. I couldn't let him down, so I started throwing again. To try and get through it, I split it into 10 lots of 10. I'd throw the ball 10 times, then sit down and have a rest before the umpire noticed. I'd then throw it another 10 times. This event again showed my lack of training. I didn't have the arm strength to be able to throw the ball in the air and I was too tired to be able to do the squats properly. Before the event I thought this was actually going to be one of the easier ones but actually it's a really good last event because if you were good you could try and do this as fast as possible to get a good time or if you're like me and terrible then it's challenging enough to think if I can just get through this then I'll really enjoy crossing that finishing line. But I was too knackered to celebrate. In fact, I got a bit confused when I crossed the finishing line because a man handed me a key and I wasn't really very sure what to do with it. Then he pointed at a safe at the back and said, try that there and if it opens, you win a prize. I gave it a try and I didn't win anything. I'd have preferred it if they just handed me a t-shirt. Overall, it was a brilliant event that I thoroughly enjoyed. My wife enjoyed her day spectating and is now desperate to do it herself next year. I look forward to being behind the camera. There's only one winner.
Andrew won. The burpees was the worst thing ever. 